My name is Alan Ernesto Gomez Sanchez and I'm going to talk about the Indo-European family of language. So the first topic is the language is constantly changing. Okay. Well, in this in this topic the 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 organs and the muscles of the organism is very important to make the 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 speech the sounds because the language is produced by the passage of a current of air through cavities of the throat and the face controlled by the muscle of these regions well as you can see the lungs play an important role in this part because with they you can you can aspirate and you control the air when you want to make sounds now any alteration in the position or action of the organs of speech results in a different difference in the sound produced that means that the the way that I see the speak they use different different uh, different ways to speak to talk they change the words or they change the uh, the sounds and that's why the language changed okay the the second topic is dialectal differentiation okay first one a dialect is a form of language that is specific to a particular region or group there are a lot of difference in the language so it de depends of the of the country depends of the of the language of the idiom as you can see in the picture you can see the the form or the way that that the people is speaking so in the book talks about a uh, close relationship between English and German for example these words as milk and milk brought and bread flesh and flesh water and water so th these words have diverged from a common form that means that it happened in the same way with the connection with with the connection between latin and english is indicated by such correspondence as father with english father or frater i'll talk the difference in the initial consonants tends to somewhat to obscure the relationship the discovery of sanskrit the most important discovery leading to this hypothesis was the recognition that sanskrit a language of ancient india was one of the language of the group this was first suggested in the latter part of the 18th century and fully established by the Indo-European family of language 
17 beginning of the 19th. So the extensive literature of India reaching back further than that of any of the European language preserves features of the common language much older than most of those of Greek or Latin or German. It is easier, for example, to see the resemblance between the English word brother and the Sanskrit brother. Time between brother and frater. So, in this part, you can see how how the word brother is written in Sanskrit. As you can see, it, it is uh, it has some some relationship at the form to to produce the sound of this word. So Sanskrit has a full system of declensions and conjugations by which it became clear that the inflection of this language could likewise be traced to a common origin. So as you can see, you can see the difference of the language in in the forms to 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 say or to write the verb to be. Well, as you can see in the picture, the Sanskrit forms it has the the same endings so the material offered by sanskrit for comparison with the other language of the group both in matters of the vocabulary and inflection was this of the greatest importance Grimm's law also know as the first Germanic sound shift is a set of statements named after Jacob Grimm and Rasmus Rask describing the Proto-Indo-European stop continent as they develop in the Proto-Germanic in the first millennium before Christ. It established a set of regular correspondence between Germanic stops, fricatives, and the stop consonants of certain other centum Indo European languages. So, in this part, Grimm used mostly Latin and Greek for the illustration. Grimm's law was the first discovery of a systematic sound change and it le led to the creation of historical phonology as a separate discipline of historical linguistics. In 1822, Jacob Grimm put the fourth rule in his book Dutch grammatic and extend to, to include the standard German. He noticed that there were many words which had different consonants from what he last predicted and these ex exceptions defied linguistics for a few decades. But they eventually received explanation from Danish linguist Carl Berner in the form of Berner's Law. According to Grimm, or Grime, a P in Indo European preserved as such in Latin and Greek was changed to an F. 
in the Germanic language. So in this case, the Latin words, for example, pieces or pass, change to or no, replace to to the letter F. And this is what we actually find in this case is fish and food, respectively. In High German, some of these consonants underwent a further change, known as the second or High German sound shift. It accounts for such difference as we see in English and Germany often. English it and German as formulation of these correspondences is known as Grimm's law. There are words in Finnish borrowed from Germanic that do not show the change and that therefore must have result from a contact between Germanic and Finnish before the change occur. There is also evidence that the shifting was still occurring as late as about the 5th century before Christ. It is often assumed that the change was due to contact with non-Germanic population. The contact could have resulted from the migration of the Germanic tribes or from the penetration of a foreign population into Germanic territory. Grimm's law consists of three parts which form consecutive phases in the sense of a chain shift. The phases are usually construed as follows. proto into european voiceless stops change into voiceless fricatives. proto indo european voice stops become voiceless stops. Proto-Indo-European voice aspirate stops become voice stops or fricatives, also known as allophones. A fricative is a consonant that is made when you squeeze a through a small hole or gap in your mouth. And an allophone is one of the ways in which a particular phoneme can be pronounced. The steps could also have occurred somewhat differently. Another possible sequence of events could have been voiceless stops are allophonically aspirated under most conditions. Voice stops become unaspirated voiceless stops. All aspirated stops become fricatives. So, when the Grimm's law has adjustments, another change occurs that is also known as Berner's law. So, they change the fricatives that result from the Grimm's law changes. So, he creates an apparent exception for the rule. Well, as you can see, the word, how they change. The formulation of this explanation is now as Berner's law, and it was of great significance in vindicating the claim of regularity for the sound change that Grimm's law had attempt to define.